So up here I've got a porthole, that was free. An LDV window, and that was free. Narrowboat hatch, again it was a Facebook find. Fridge at a narrowboat, I got that for free. Household sink, that again, out of skip, free. Welcome back to another Liberation video. Today we're down by the Stonehenge talking to Max. Thanks to Max for letting us come down and film and we hope you enjoy the video. Back to it. So I'm Max and I'm 19 years old. I live in my Luton van truck. I converted it myself as well as make everything mechanically sound on it, even though I'm having a few issues now. <laughs> so I do for a living. I install uh, off-grid setups into camper vans and just yeah upgrade existing systems a lot of the time in motorhomes. Well, because I'm only 19, I was living at my dad's and I converted two vans there to kind of earn some money and then I bought this one. But I've always just been doing little jobs. Vans, ever since my childhood, have always been the dream. So when I got my first one, I was 16 and I'd converted my mum's when I was 15. So I just kind of went on from there. So the van is a Mercedes T1, this one's a 1995 Luton van and originally it was uh, some kind of snack van because it's only three and a half tonne and then once upon a time it was converted to a removals lorry as most Lutons are. It was left in a field I presume for quite a few years and, uh, and then I had to take the box off and do all the stuff to basically a bottle welder and learn how to weld and had to weld it all back together and now it's on the road. Yeah, it's had quite a little history and it's 28 years old and now it's had a paint job and it's all solid underneath. It's got a new lease of life. So the van's name is Rose, Rusty Rose, because, uh, well, it was very rusty. I went with Rose because the cab was originally red. It also has Roy's removals decal, so I could have named it Roy, but I ended up with Rose. My, my kind of mindset of what I do is if something's broken then I'll buy the part and try to fix it myself basically. I'm not kind of the person who would go to someone to get it fixed. Apparently my van's broken so I just uh, ordered the part online, get it and then work out how to fix it and same with anything breaks and that's why I like building everything myself because then I know how it works and if it goes wrong then I can fix it uh, which is good for if you're in the middle of nowhere and you need to fix your van. <laughs> So this is the front of Rose. I kept the old decals or painted sign right in here. Roy's removals and light haulage. It's a big 2.9 litre non-turbo diesel engine, five cylinder, slow up hills, but it gets you there. It's reliable but slow, that's why I say. Up here is um, my bed uh, above the cab, which saves a lot of space in the, in the length of the van and gives you a lot more space inside. And I hand painted the box using just a roller from Wix and some military paint and it's just had two coats but to be honest it does blend in nicely. So the idea of painting it green is as I say I park in a lot of forests and it can just blend in, park at the back of a forest. It's usually pretty dark and you can't really see it to be honest. It does blend in pretty well. So up here I've got a porthole which was left over from my dad's boat so that was free. And up there there's a um, an LDV window and that was also given to me by, by my neighbour and that was free. Uh, the two vents are uh, vents for the insulation because I've used um, 50 millimeters sheep's wool insulation and the idea behind that is that it's all breathable if you use a breathable membrane inside because if you think about a house they're made breathable and a lot of people in vans tend to vapor bar it all off and seal it so by doing this I've made a whole breathable box put in two vents so you will get a bit of condensation build up but it will dry out nice and quickly because of the ventilation. From the side you can see the two massive solar panels which are 600 watt each and they do produce a lot of power. So this is the back of the van. I made this wooden wall and uh, there's the door that I bought. It's a nice stable door. I wanted it so you could just open the top half and just kind of see out and then not pe many people could see in because it's quite high. Up there I got a box which houses my hose and my uh, slow stickers which everyone loves. And then I've got here which is the waffle boards which as I say got me out of trouble already and then there's just a 20 litre jerry can just in case I need that. Here I've got uh, an old ladder that was also on Facebook and uh, this was a, a two, four metre one and I chopped it down and then just made these rails and it just slides away nice and easy. The box was an extra 50 centimetres longer before and uh, it had a big steel roller shutter that weighed probably 200 kilos. So I chopped all that off, chopped it back and put the lights there and that way I can now do like a, a three point turn, it's much more manoeuvrable 
and uh, to be honest I don't need any more space inside. So here again I've got two vents for the insulation. Here is a vent for the log burner so it can draw air in straight from right next to it. Here is uh, the water fill up which uh, fills up my 105 litre water tank which will last me about two weeks and then down the side there's plenty of scratches because you've got to carve your own path in a van this big or you just don't go anywhere and that's why I roller painted it because it cost me about 100 quid to paint it and uh, I don't really care as long as it's all one colour I don't care if it's got adventure stripes as I call them and you can just about see the burner poking out but the idea behind this side there's no windows here kind of you know dotted around vents it could just be like a kind of utility van or anything, so kind of keeping it stealth from this side. It's not really, but people who don't know much probably don't think much of it. So in here is the cab. Still needs a bit of work, but I also, as I say, welded the floor in here. And here, obviously, as you can see, is uh, this plant pot that fit perfectly in the old glove box. And it just stores some herbs, which saves you having to buy them all the time. These are old car seats because the van didn't actually come with any seats and uh, it's given these by my neighbour. Eventually I will probably make a cut out through to the back but for now they're two separate things. So what got me into this was um, my parents both went to festivals and stuff and they both had their own vans. My dad travelled around in buses in the late 80s and 90s and then when I was born they bought a, a big, um, kind of like this, it was an old Mercedes T2 box van and uh, they it was converted but then they reconverted it and uh, there's old pictures of me just sat there watching and helping <laughs> build this van when I was probably one years old if that and uh, yeah ever since then it's just been a dream to convert my own van and live in it not off the Instagram side of things I didn't get to it that way it was through basically being born into it <laughs> yeah basically it's in my blood <laughs> so the main reason I, I enjoy this is the travel and freedom that you get from it um, but also I could never see myself being static and living in a house like it's just not me it's not me because I, I just got this I, I, a sense of adventure basically I just want to you know you've got to make the most of your life while you can so the van is made to be basically 100% off-grid I've never been in a campsite in it yet so on the roof I've got 1200 watts solar, I've got a DIY lithium battery bank which I made. I've got 105 litres of water so that will do me for about two weeks or more. And then I've got loads of wood storage for the wood burner because that's my pretty much only source of heat. And I just park in like little woodlands, just find a little woodland car park, park there. Yeah, just go into the forest in the morning and chop it all up and then put it in a burner. So never spent a penny on fuel for the burner. And it, and it gives us so much heat compared to a diesel here. It's a completely different type of heat and it's really nice. So the idea behind the van was to make it kind of, there's so many materials already out there, I didn't want to buy things that I didn't have to, new. Things like plywood and the framing wood I bought new, but like the door here is this, it's a stable door just off Facebook Marketplace. It was uh, £30. And then inside mostly is pallet wood and reclaimed and the window is free, given to me. Um, the floorboards are all reclaimed out of a house. Um, so yeah, reclaimed and used as much as possible um, just to make it kind of sustainable as possible and and on a budget it you know it helps and it gives it that kind of quirky character you couldn't make another one because there's only one of like the used materials but the van itself cost me um just over a, a grand but then i had to get it to me so it was about just under two grand by the time i got it uh, it didn't cost me much to get it on the road it just took eight months of my time so it cost my time but not not too much of money and then inside i spent about six so it's come to about nine in total, but to be honest, some people spend that on their electrical system. So I'm pretty happy with the price of that. And yeah, where I can go reclaimed as possible, it keeps the cost down. The cost of living in a van is pretty, pretty cheap, especially with the wood burn. I don't need obviously any, any monthly cost for that. The most expensive bill is, is fuel because this van gets about 17 miles to the gallon. So you end up putting like 100 quid in a week, but when it's your home, you're not paying rent. So I'd say most costs you could get like 300 pound a month and yeah, you sorted. A lot of the time I'm based around work in Herefordshire. So I just, I got a little spot there. And again, it's a woodland spot. And I just, um, just kind of bounce around, but I just go wherever, just yeah, wild camping in the middle of nowhere. The less people, the better. Come here to Stonehenge occasionally, especially when it, it's, it's, it's quite a chill place. So when you're stuck and you need to somewhere safe to be, it's a good spot. But yeah, I got lots of the country to travel. Eventually I plan to go to Europe. So this is the inside of the van. As you can see, it's quite rustic. 
the beds up there. It really doesn't look much like a van. It's more like a cabin on wheels from in here. I've put just a throw up there, which keeps the weight down. I've got copper fairy lights, which makes it very atmospherical. Here I've got all the pallet wood on the walls, as I say. So not the lightest, but it is, I do like the look of pallet wood and I've tried to save weight elsewhere. Here is just an L-shaped sofa that is in progress. It needs some proper cushions, but it's gonna fold out to be a double bed as well. That can be a spare bed. Underneath, I've got loads of storage. So here is the, the steps that get up onto the bed. And uh, I've got a little control panel here, and this is where all my electrics are. So I've got my, my battery in there and charge controllers and inverter and stuff and all the technical stuff there. And then here is the, the wood burner, which is made from an old gas bottle. And I, I welded that myself too, to you know keep the cost down, but it's designed in such a way. It's based off a very expensive narrowboat wood burner that will also do coal. So I can keep this going overnight. I've had it going for well over 12 hours before to just keep it down and tick over all night. And uh, yeah, that thing's a lifesaver. So it is just a work in progress. So the ceiling does need doing. Um, I need to put some plywood up there. That's one of the next jobs. And then here I've got like a bit of tree um, and I just thought that would look quite nice there. And it's kind of like a drying thing for all your, your bits and bobs, towels and whatnot, but also just, you know, adds a bit of character. Found it in the forest one day for looking for firewood. So underneath the sofa, I've just got these hinged hatches and um, they go right down to the real floor of the van, which gives me plenty of storage for all my tools because I carry pretty much all my tools because as I say, I do everything myself on the road. So if something breaks, I need to have as many tools as possible. So I've got everything to fix anything that happens basically. Above the bed to let a bit more light in and also to get up onto the roof, I fitted this narrowboat hatch, which is probably my guess is about 30 years old already. It's not one of the plastic ones. Again, it was a Facebook find. They're usually about 500 pound, but this one was 90 pound. That's how I get up because I don't have any windows in those two sides. If there's any noise or anything, I can put my head out and have a look that way and just sit and having a cup of tea in the morning. So I, I, I often have dinner up there and stuff. If it's a nice day, it's a good place to make the most of it. And you do get a really nice view of like everything because you're like a bird's eye view, just sitting up on the roof. And uh, everyone always wants to talk to you when you're up there and why you're up there. <laughs> so this is the first bit of the van where you come in. Even though I've got pretty much full size countertops, you end up with this really big walkway, which just makes it feel really big and I've got all this storage under here so if you look it's about 30 centimeters deep and under there stores all my food and stuff so I store about like two weeks worth of food tinned food and whatnot and then uh, this was a fridge at a narrowboat as I say my parents live on one and uh, this one was just in the in the skip by the boats one day and it's a 12 volt compressor fridge and anyone who knows anything about building a van they're not cheap so I got that for free which was good and this is just an old household sink that again out of skip cleaned it and uh, yeah free here is where the shower is going to be currently there's just clothes hanging up here the whole thing will be a shower and then there's to the separating toilet which i built myself it cost a grand total of a pound which was the uh, the bucket itself so here i've got an induction hob which uh, runs off the batteries and here's the air fryer i do have a little emergency gas stove but i haven't had to use it at all and it, this will do everything so i could do it for like a full-size pizza in the oven it's an air fryer oven so i can do all sorts of different bits in it and then there's the window from the inside with again more herbs there and by raising the floor, as you can see, I've still got lots of room, but you end up with no overhead cupboards, which makes it feel a lot bigger inside and also keeps the weight down low, which is good. So the countertops are uh, an old wardrobe side that my friend gave me because I had some scrap supply and he was like, this will be a good idea for your countertop. And uh, I really like them, so they'll probably stay. Again, they were free, they're nice and wipeable, so that's good. The drawers were given to me, so I didn't have to build drawers. I just replaced the front with pieces of pallet wood which as you can see is much more in my style. Here is um, just, it's not really got any storage, it's just a utility cupboard that holds um, all, it, water tanks and whatnot. And the water tanks are underneath the kitchen, but still inside the van because of the subfloor. And then I've got my water pipes and eventually I'm gonna have a, a water filter as well. So you can just fill up from pretty much anywhere, even rainwater if you wanted to, and just stick it in there and it'll filter it. So when I get the shower done, I'm going to need the hot water. So the idea is in the winter, I'm going to make a loop that goes off the back of the burner that will heat like a 15 litre water tank. And that's how I'll get that in the winter. And then in the summer, I'm going to have an immersion heater which will run off the solar and it will heat off the water just using excess solar because my batteries pretty much are always at 100% um, in the summer. So you'll get free hot water basically. So down here is uh, actually, I keep all my good wood here. So this is like the emergency stock for if you're stuck and it's really nice so this is all nice really hard oak 
which burns really hot and nice. So if you if you need to keep it in for the night and you're in a woodland with terrible rotten wood, you can come to the emergency stock basically and grab some. The community in the vans is, is really nice. A lot of the time people help each other out. Like when I was doing my breaks yesterday, uh, some guy came and asked for a spanner, you know, and um, people help each other out for the most part. And I love that about it. It's just people do just kind of mostly, for the most part, help each other out and everyone's there to help each other. So my favorite part about living this lifestyle is just the, the, the freedom and just, you can just, take you home everywhere and then you've got everything like I say to some of my friends who are full-time as well I couldn't imagine driving a car you know you can't just pull over and make up a tea kind of thing it's yeah it's nice to just have your home with you all the time um, but probably the worst bit is times when the van's got problems because you haven't got anywhere to go you're living in it and if it's got a problem you've got to find a safe space to then try and fix it or take it to a garage and if you take it to the garage then you've got to find somewhere to stay so that's the worst bit in, and it's quite hard on the vehicle to be fair because it never really gets a rest, gets used every day and um, yeah it's a hard life of a vehicle I reckon being lived in. So people that just see things online and, and think that oh that's great I'd love to do that it is great but as I say it also has its downsides and unless you've got a safe space to stay or at a campsite and you've got to be constantly moving it can sometimes be quite stressful to think oh, where have I got to be tonight especially if you're not familiar with the area you've not been there before and no one you know is around there that can be quite um it's a big change from just living in one place because you've got to move pretty much every day or every other day um if you're wild camping because you just want to keep it on so you don't disturb anyone that could be quite a change to have to move all the time so my my family does really support me on this as I say my parents did this when they were before they had children and just yeah pretty much born into me and they're still kind of living that lifestyle but not quite they're not in houses they're in um, boats uh, so narrowboat life is uh, quite similar to van apart from you don't quite move as far so I've got some pretty big plans for this van I plan to go to Scotland this winter do a winter trip around Scotland when it's nice and quiet and there's snow and go up the mountains in the highlands and not see anyone eventually I want to take it to the Arctic as well so it's a proper all four season van is what it's made for but also eventually come time I've got no rush to do it but just travel through all sorts of different continents and all over the world basically and through Africa and past Europe and stuff and yeah that's that's the plan and it will do some miles basically and uh, explore explore the rest of the world other than just the UK and Europe so thanks very much for looking around my van and um, watching this video you can find me on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook are under Rusty Rose Adventures. And thanks very much for watching this video. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to another video there. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to Max for showing us around. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what you think because we love to hear it. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.